Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 371. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Trick 371 to 376. Hey, here we have a customer database, date, customer number or customer name, order number, and amount. We want to calculate for each customer, we have a GHC, a GHC, for each individual customer we want to calculate the average time between orders. So we have dates here. Now we really don't need the order number and the order amount, so I'm going to hide these columns right here. Highlight both of the columns, right click and hide. Now first, we need to uh, sort, and this is very important for this trick. We're going to sort the date first, and then second we'll uh, sort the customer number or customer name. So I'm going to in 2007, right-click sort. In earlier versions, you use the A to Z or Z to A button on the toolbar. I'm going to say oldest to newest. So I got the date sorted. Now I'm going to come over and sort the uh, customers. So that way, uh, the customer GHC, all the times that that'll listed, when we sort by this, it'll retain uh, the order of the dates from the earliest to the latest. So right-click, sort, and then A to Z. So now we have GHC, GHC, and you can see the dates are sorted uh, in ascending order. Now, uh, we're going to do our analysis over here, but first, uh, since we have sorted here, I'd, it's very simple. We can calculate for a GHC. Here's the later date. We take this date, which is a serial number, number of days since December 31st, 1899. There, that one minus this one will give us like uh, however many days that is, uh, six days. Then we take this one minus this one, and we get something like um, 60 days or something. Ah, but notice that when we get to a change in the customer or customer number here, we don't want a calculation here. I'm going to say new customer. So we're going to have to use an if equals if. And I'm going to say is the one above or one to my left and one above not, and that's less than or less than symbol than greater than symbol not, is it not equal to this one, one to my left. So that will be a relative cell reference. That's a way of checking when you get to a new one, because when it gets down to here, this will not be equal to that. If that's the case, then you type a comma, and in double quotes you say new customer. Actually, I'm just going to put cust, period. Otherwise, we actually want to take the date, two cells to my left minus the date from the previous record. Now notice something right here. It doesn't matter that this is words right here because new customer will get dumped in this cell. But when it gets down to this line, those relative cell references will say this transaction date minus the transaction date from the previous transaction. Close parentheses and control enter. Now we can double click and send it down. There we have six days between these two and 62 days between those. Now, I want to show you something really cool about the average function because we're going to have to use, um, to, to calculate the average for all of these, we'll just take the average. But I don't want to, if I had 10,000 rows of data, I don't want to have to come uh, outside to each one of these and individually do average. So we're going to do ask in a formula, hey, show me all the SWIs and then go over to this column and calculate it. But if we do that, if we say, hey, find all these and then find all the parallel values here, there's a word. But guess what? The average fun function will ignore that word. So that will work. Let's just ch check it here. Average. Highlight all of these. Boom. And sure enough, 12.75. That is the same as if we did not include. And if you go up to help, you'll see that it says that it ignores texts, um, uh, words like these words here. All right, so now we have those. Now, for this data set, we really could come here, 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 and calculate by hand. But forget that. For a huge data set, you never want to do that. So the next thing we need to do is we need to take this column right here and extract the unique a, a list of unique items. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go to Advanced Filter Data. Uh, filter and then in 2007 it's right there. In earlier versions you go to the data menu, uh, filter, advanced filter. So I'm going to click there. 
Now, I already did this once before, so you wouldn't have this, so you'd say the list range. You'd, you'd click, you'd actually highlight this because you don't want to highlight uh, the whole table, just that column with the field name. Copy to another location. There is no criteria because we're going to check unique records only. Copy to, and I'm going to click right here. And there it is. I'm going to get rid of the sorted. I put that note there. That's the first one you sort. That's what the second one. So there we have our unique list. Now I want to count how many there are. So I'm going to use equals count if. The range is going to be this entire column. Click there, control shift down arrow, and then hit F4 to lock it. I'm only copying down, so I'm only going to put the dollar sign in front of the row reference. Comma, and the criteria will be this. So we're counting the, in, the number of transactions, one, two, three, four, so actual number of transactions for each customer. Control enter, and then double click and send it down. So there's five and one. Now, if you were calculating an average when you're counting, you cannot like calculate the arithmetic mean. You actually have to do this right here, which is to calculate the frequency. And then the one that occurs most frequency is called the mode. And that would be considered the average. So if we were doing an average of number of transactions that customers uh, purchase, um, given this time period here, the mode would tell us three. Now, average time between order, that's orders. That's our goal here. Now I am going to actually do two formulas, one for 2007 and one for 2003 and earlier. I do want to hide some columns here. Um, actually, I can't hide any because we're going to be using all of these. Uh, well, I'm going to scroll over here. You ready? Here's our 2007 formula. There's an average if. Because remember, our goal is to say if whatever this particular customer is, find all of those and then go over to this column, get those values, and average them. So we can just use the average if equals average if. You can double click that. It wants the range with criteria, the criteria, which will be our customer name, and then the numbers to, to average. So I'm going to go over and get the column of customer names, control shift down arrow, and then F4 to lock it. Comma, the criteria is going to be one, two, two cells to my left. And then the average names will be this column. And remember, we're uh, leveraging the fact that the average will ignore those uh, words. Control shift down arrow, and then F4 to lock it, F4 to lock it. I always like to use the minimum number of dollar signs. All right, so there we have it. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. Now we're going to get a divide by zero, and we're going to deal. With, that's because there's a uh, a one. Th there is no two dates to calculate the difference from. So in 2007, there's a nice new function called if error. If error. And if error is great because you, in earlier versions you might have to list the this function twice. But here it's just there's a thing that's either going to get a number or a value or return something or an error. And then you just put comma and what do you want? If it's an error, I'm going to put uh, in double quotes one order. In double quote, close parentheses on the if error, control enter. Double click and send it down. That is not an array formula. Now we're going to come over to 2003. We're going to have to do an array formula. We're going to have to use the if, the average function, and the if function together, and it will be an array. Not only that, I'm going to use two ifs because I want to find if there's one order and then tell it to put one. If there's one order in this column, I want to put that text string there. So I'm going to say if equal, how about equals if? This one right here is greater than 1. So if it's great, or how about just equals? If that's equals to 1, comma, then what do we want? In double quotes, we want uh, 1 order in double quote. Otherwise, if that's false, meaning it's not equal to 1, it's some other number, uh, then what do we want? We want average function with an if. Now, inside of the average, we're going to have to use the if. So we say if. The logical test for the if function is going to be a series of trues and falses. Remember, we want to isolate only a particular customer. We want true, true, true. And then the if function will grab these values here. So we highlight this whole column here. And I'm going to have to hit F4. So right now we have if 
that any of the values in that range are equal to, and we have to go get our relative cell reference, uh, so that'll be G15. If that's the case, what do we want? We actually want uh, our uh, values to uh, calculate off of, so I'm going to click on the top, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4 to lock it. All right, so if that's equal to 1, we put order 1, then average if, and we say that if any of them are equal to that particular customer name, then please take all those values. We are done with the if. We do not need the value if false, because it'll just give falses, and average will not uh, use a false, just as it won't use a word um, in its calculation. So we can simply close that off. Then we have to close off the average. And then finally, we have to close off this first if, and this is an array formula, so we have to hold Control Shift and Enter. Control Shift Enter, double click and uh, send it down. So there you go. Uh, we've calculated the average time in days for each one of these customers. The average time between uh, orders for GHC was 34, the average for PCC was 11.66, the average for SWI was 12. Now this was a small data set just so we could maneuver around in this video, but you can imagine how uh, easy it would be to do all of this if you had 10,000 records. Alright, we'll see you next video.